Hello, and welcome to the Fred Simon Gallery. We are a little gallery based in the Nebraska Arts Council offices at 1004 Farnham Street. And my name is Megan Dion. I uh, am the Public Art and Artist Program Specialist, and I help run the gallery. Um, we feature artists from Nebraska across the whole state, and uh, today we're here with Derek Burbel, who is going to talk to us about his photography. Uh, we're super excited, and we hope that you come see the show soon. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Derek Burble, and I'm out of Kearney, Nebraska, where I teach at the University of Nebraska Kearney uh, in the art design department. I'm the chair, and I teach photography and foundation of design. And uh, this is my exhi exhibition, Wanderings, uh, A Walk in the Woods. So um, I grew up in the Midwest, but in the northern Midwest, uh, born in Duluth, Minnesota, grew up in uh, northern Wisconsin, up near Lake Superior. Uh, that has a big influence on the work itself. Um, I am a landscape photographer, uh, so uh, a lot of this work um, has roots in there, or you'll see images from, from northern Wisconsin, but you'll also see images from all over the country, and of course, you'll see uh, imagery from landscape imagery from Nebraska. Um, but at this point, I'm, I'm well beyond just landscape. Uh, the work is about um, fragmented knowledge. It's about time and the sort of like cyclical nature of time and the overlapping of time. Uh, it's not just linear, uh, it seems to wrap back around. And it's also about uh, photography itself and the processes that it, it has encompassed in its history. Uh, I'm very curious about photography and all its permutations and I love to explore them. And explore and the better word here for is wander is uh, what I like to do best. I like to go around and see things and, and you know, be influenced by them and try to understand them. And uh, that goes for, for the landscape, uh, it goes for the photographic process, and it also goes for our whole culture around us. And that's, I would say, a more recent development where I see how the landscape is connected to the rest of culture. And that's what this exhibition really is about. So this piece here uh, exhibits, I think, all the characteristics I was talking about. Um, we've got the landscape, and the landscape here is uh, Lake Superior, looking down on Lake Superior from uh, Split Rock Lighthouse, an iconic thing on the North Shore of Minnesota. Um, and that's not far from where I grew up, so you know, ber very personal in the terms of landscape, a place uh, I would go with the family and, and explore. Um, so we've got that landscape element. We have the, the photographic element. We see the strips of film here. This is 35 millimeter film, and that uh, dominated most of the history of photography. Well, not most of the history, but you know, like the 1920s, 30s, um, into early 2000s uh, film, 35 millimeter film is uh, predominant. So I have that reference to that, that history of photography. Um, and then thinking about the broader cultural context, I have this iconic image that is merged in there and I do that in the dark room. Um, I have a digital negative and then I have the, another negative here. And this is uh, Megan Rapino from the 2019 World Cup. And thinking about time, um, I realized the time of this exhibition coincided with the, the current Women's World Cup and uh, the last World Cup. Um, so I wanted to integrate that. That's played a big role in my life. My children played soccer, so I spent a lot of time doing that. Um, and my daughter particularly, so watching a lot of the women's national team. Um, so we've got these cultural influences. And then of course, she is uh, iconic in, in my mind in terms of uh, justice and equality and fighting for that. Uh, women um, uh, trying to be equal and get equal pay and these these concepts and this is where you know it's not just pretty landscapes so how I see these things related because I'm uh, a proponent of sort of environmentalism and uh, landscape and, and advocating for and it's not just that everything has to be pristine um, but we should do our best by it for ourselves um, but the question that came came to my mind was 
Looking at how we interact with each other, we're not always very kind to each other. And you know that we fall flat in that face of striving for equality and justice. Uh, and the, the question that came into my mind um, when, before I started making this work was, if we can't even be kind to each other, how can we ever get to that place where we can care for the landscape? And that really kind of opened up my mind to really see uh, the relationships between all these um, interconnected uh, social issues. And not everyone's comfortable with those, but we can't solve anything until we admit that there's a problem and that we make an effort towards it. So I think that's really important. Um, and then it also lead me to understand this buzzword, this concept that we hear of intersectionality and what actually does that mean? And it just talks about that, that we can't solve any issue and singularly, they're all interconnected and related and it's a collective effort and a desire to actually solve problems as opposed to just, you know, not do anything. This is another piece that um, shows all these sort of ideas and concepts that, that I'm thinking about. This piece is also very personal to me. Um, the scene here is the Apostle Islands National Lake Shore on Lake Superior, uh, a national park. I love the national parks. I've always explored you know, state parks and national parks, the places that um, growing up we would go to and that was like some of my favorite things, hiking around, exploring, wandering. Um, so, you know, this is, a, you can see, just very beautiful, vibrant, and this is in the winter, and um, in January, when it gets really cold, you can actually walk out onto Lake Superior and, and go out to the islands. And uh, you walk along the shore and you actually encounter ice caves. The ice will just like fall, flow over the, these uh, rocks and, and create like caves. So it's really kind of fascinating place to go. And I went there with my brother. This is from uh, the late 90s, is, is the image here. Um, but the other thing I learned growing up was that um, the creation of this park actually negatively affected my family. My, my grandfather had a cabin on Lake Superior and it was within what is now the boundaries of the park. And um, so the government took that cabin away to create this park. So I have very mixed feelings about this. One, my grandpa I know was upset about this, but two, I really do believe in the national parks. I think it's one of the best ideas the United States has ever had. Um, so I wanted to explore that a little bit. And the other thing with this work, the question that I have, I have many questions, always layers, um, is in this day and age of Instagram and Facebook and social media, why print a photograph? If you're going to print a photograph to me, there should be a, a reason, a texture, it should have a presence to it. Um, so I really began thinking about how can I give these photographs a presence and push them beyond just that simple square. Um, so with this one, I actually I wanted to cut a hole in this, and that's sort of a metaphor for this idea of my, my family having this cabin and this photograph is uh, from my family's collection. I got it from my aunt. Uh, she sent it to me, I asked her for it, and she sent me this photograph. Um, so I wanted to cut this hole into this park and, and place my, my family's cabin back into it. And when I was doing this, I start thinking about, okay, I'm sure my family was not the only one affected. So I was researching and looking for information about other families or articles that might speak about this. Just to, you know, a curiosity is probably my, the thing I have the most of. Um, and uh, so I was curious, became very curious about this. So I started researching that and I couldn't find articles about other families, but what I kept encountering, and I feel like I should have known this, was that the uh, Ojibwe Chippewa community, the native community of this, was very upset at the creation of this park because this, of course, is their historic land. And I feel like I should have known this because I have an uncle who uh, just passed away, and he, but he is 100% Ojibwe, and he's just been part of my family my whole life. Um, and so last summer, I actually got to sit down and talk with him for several hours, and it was nice because then he passed a few months after that. Um, but him telling those stories um, about his grandparents uh, who, who had to claim to be less native 
than they were uh, because his grandpa was a uh, captain on a Coast Guard ship and he could not be captain of that Coast Guard ship if he was 100% native. So he had to claim to be 49% native. And this is the same story that my wife has because her grandma had a uh, trading post uh, in Menominee, uh, Wisconsin. And she couldn't own that trading post if she was 100% uh, Menominee. Um, so she claimed to be 49% Menominee. And uh, so it becomes a really interesting story. So through this process, I learned a lot more than I think. And that for me is what art does. Art for me is a learning process. All right, so this piece is a really good example of me trying to break out of that, that rectangle, that flatness of photography and having a reason um, to print images. So it also uh, deals with time, but we can see here that it's, it's become much more sculptural. It's three-dimensional, it's 360 degrees. I can walk all around here. I've framed these photographs back to back and uh, so I've got actually what you'd see as a typical photograph over here, you know, it's just a nice photograph of a tree. This is a much more abstract variation of this. And this is called a solar graph. And, and what I do here is I take photo paper, um, black and white photo paper, historical photo paper, put it into a pinhole camera and let it expose for weeks. And then we call it a solar graph because if the sun's in the frame, this is the sun rising every day. And so the sun just makes this mark and it, it causes the paper to oxidize and that's what we get. So when I pull the image out, I can actually see it. It's faint and it's negative. Um, so this was kind of reddish. So when I inverted it in Photoshop, it became this really vibrant sort of green. Um, so this is that time element. And you know, there's so many different ways to play with photography and this is what I'm really curious about. So that's how I'm playing with photography. And then we got this uh, large uh, sculptural um, piece. So. are an example. We often think of landscape photography and we think of pretty lakes, trees, skies, mountains, but um, all the landscapes are important. And with these, we've got uh, farmland references. Uh, this is actually Whitman County in Washington State. Um, this is Iowa, Central Iowa. Uh, this is Iowa. These uh, tomatoes were grown in Nebraska. Um, so there's, there's all the landscapes are interesting. All the landscapes are valuable. And um, it's fun to explore. I don't, I try to keep an open mind when I'm photographing and not just be too focused on one um, simple idea or subject or whatever it is. Uh, and as well, you can see very different ways that I'm exploring this. Um, this one also has an interesting relationship of, of time because uh, I started growing um, heirloom tomatoes several years ago. And there's so, um, there's so many variations of them. Uh, they're so pretty, uh, so I started photographing them, and what I decided ultimately to do is photograph them like, uh, like they're a planet. Uh, so I took lighting in there, and I have, if you look at this, the lighting shifts here, lighting shifts from on this side, and as we go through it, it's dead on here, and then it goes the other side, so it's uh, kind of like, uh, you know, uh, I wanted 24 hours, I think I got 12 here, but uh, 12 hours of tomatoes. Um, but, uh, you know, so just another way that I'm playing with time. And then, of course, very sculptural. They're um, in, you know, mason jars. I also uh, like to use, um, I, I like to be, you know, talking about environmental uh, concepts. Um, I try to be very uh, careful in, in the materials I use. And uh, I don't want waste. So I really work hard to use like a lot of these frames here. If you look at these frames, there's holes in there. 
uh, nail holes. That most of this is pallet wood at some point, so I rip it apart and then sand it down and find the good wood. This one I left, uh, if you look here, it's very rough. And that was intentional because I always think, you know, growing up my parents canned, they had gardens. And it would be in the basement and the cellar and dark and the shells would just be rough. Whatever wood, you know, was laying around, they wouldn't be nice because they were out of, out, out of mind. Uh, so I intentionally, you know, left this sort of rough. Usually I, I work the wood and, you know, make it smooth. I might be using wood that's not the best wood, but my, I try to pay attention to my craftsmanship because I think that's important. Um, then breaking out of frame, this one I, I broke into these triangles um, and it was almost more sort of like, I'm like, I've never seen a photograph framed in a triangle. Um, so I, I, I did that, and but I also started thinking about uh, how many of our concepts uh, of culture actually you know, have roots into Greek philosophy. And, and you know, so we, we've got, uh, I, I titled this one, I'm trying to remember, Plotinus, who is a, a Greek philosopher. Um, and I can't remember the other philosopher right now, but anyways, you know, so think about these, these triangles and the relationship and you know, there's concepts in art like the golden mean. And, um, so I wanted to play with, with some of those uh, and I will never make triangle frames again. That was very hard. So. In this one, you can see me really breaking, you know, apart pieces. There are four pieces to make this one piece, but each of these pieces is broken up into smaller pieces. Um, the, again, you see there are film strips here, references to film, 35 millimeter film. Um, and the imagery is, is different landscapes. Uh, this is uh, McCoe's Park in uh, Boone, Iowa. Um, this is, I'm trying to remember the stream. This is out in Idaho. I can't remember the name of the stream of this, this series of images. And uh, this series of images, I think, is uh, from Nebraska in here. So we've got these landscape images, but then sprinkled throughout them, um, talking about the, the current cultural things, and I've got a lot of questions. And um, we've got uh, the character here from Kenosha, Wisconsin, um, who took it upon himself, I ended up killing people. Um, and then was legally uh, deemed not guilty uh, for that, which is interesting. But we also have here, I have a historical figure here, we have John Brown. And John Brown uh, directly has roots to Nebraska in Kansas. Um, he uh, was in Kansas um, during, before they were states. Uh, we have the Kansas-Nebraska Kansas Act, uh, which allowed states to choose if they came into the state as a slave state or a free state. And he was uh, a rabid abolitionist. He worked uh, in the uh, Underground Railroad to help take slaves up into Canada. Um, he was, uh, I say rabid because um, he, he was uh, very dedicated to this, to the extreme. Um, he actually killed some people. Uh, and then we've got this figure. And this is where I'm talking about time and cyclical time and overlapping time and these issues that we have. And uh, if we don't do enough to solve them, they just become reoccurring. So there's a strong connection here. These two would be on opposite sides. Um, but so I love this image of him, you know, this strength. I got a lot of questions <laughs> for some of his actions, but you know, it, it's an interesting character. Um, so I've got all these images and they're a little bit dark and uh, not, um, you know, certainly don't make me happy or smile like, you know, a pretty landscape would, would or these images and these moments that, that are in these frames here um, are moments of beauty. Uh, so I have these, these moments of beauty and then inter interspersed in there are these uh, moments of terror. Um, and that's that, that duality that we have to acknowledge and exist and uh, that, that concept of being a more perfect union. We are not a perfect union. The, we are at our best and our greatest when we strive to be a more perfect union. Um, we fail to be great when we stop trying to be a more perfect union.
Where I'm going with this work is my work continues to evolve. Um, you know, I've got these fragmented images and I've learned a lot in these processes. It's taken me a lot of directions. The direction it's currently taken me is uh, much more social, almost political. I've talked about some of these uh, political concepts in my work and that's what I'm really drawn to. I, I really um, believe that this country should strive for equality and it should strive for justice and I think those are our primary goals in my opinion and everything we should do should support that and so it becomes this point now art to me is about learning exploring pushing boundaries uh, challenging things we know uh, discovering things that we don't know um, any truth should withhold any challenge and that's why I tell my students never be afraid to challenge anything because if it is true it will withstand any challenge. And if it's not true, it won't. And should we follow something that's not true? Uh, so it's important to do that. So I really feel compelled at this point to keep pushing uh, towards this understanding of, of where we are succeeding in equality and justice and where are we failing in equality and justice. And that's where my work is, is going right now, more in that direction. I do love, you know, I love this trees and this environment and the environment will always be a part of my work. Um, but it's really important for me at this point to recognize and acknowledge the intersectionality of all these social issues that we have. Global warming, whether you want to admit it or not, it, you know, you can deny it or not. Uh, the truth will tell, time will tell the truth. But uh, then, you know, any farm state could really be harmed if we don't acknowledge that there's a problem or a potential problem. And even if there's a potential problem, don't we want to look out for our farmers? Don't we want to look out for our food and our production and, and find the best way to navigate that? And it's the same with our social issues. If we are acting in unequal ways or unjust ways, that is in violation of our constitution and the foundation of this country. And we should strive for better. All right, well, thank you for watching this video. I hope you had a chance to come see the exhibition. Um, if you want to see more of my work or have questions for me, I can be found on Instagram, uh, dburble. Um, you know, I, I'm very active on Instagram. I, I post a lot of work there and I follow a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of interesting work that I see. It's really helped me grow as a photographer. Um, that's where I get a lot of inspiration from. So I'd encourage you to, to follow that but you know and follow me if you want to but please come down to the Fred Simon Gallery and uh, see the show or whatever shows next.